draft night. You kind of just pulled up when you felt like it. What were you doing before that moment? I just went shopping. Next thing you know, I get picked 10th, and they're like, oh shit, like, they want you to come to the draft. I'm like, all right. Like, David Stern's in the back. He's like, well, the 13th pick not here, so I'm just bring you out. That's what I came out. I was like, I was like, yeah, it was good. <laughs> What's up? This is Out of Pocket, the hoop show for real hoop fans. I'm the Jethro Jenkins. Josiah Johnson. I'm Zach Schwartz. We got Brandon Jennings on today, Sorry. but before we do that, LeBron has a pretty important record coming Jeez. up. And I think we got to talk about that before he gets one, on. Zach, which one? <laughs> the, the, in my mind, the like last nail in the coffin of those that say he's not the GOAT. But I, I want to ask you guys, when do you think he will break Kareem's scoring title record? I think LeBron will break that record when he feels like it. Now, <laughs> he could do it against the Knicks. I, I could see him dropping 118 points and just getting it over with, you know, <laughs> stretching that if he feels like Two it. Two records, Will and Wilts, Just un unbreakable. No, I, I think LeBron, smart man, doesn't want to do it Indiana. Obviously, you guys don't feel too fond about that city. A lot of people don't as well. I don't mind my it. My opinion has to change because my brother lives there now. Good so. steak and shake. Centrally located. They got an ocean air. They got some good restaurants. Everything is always restaurant predicated <laughs> for me. White Castle, the steak and shake, yeah. all within walking range. <laughs> but he's not going to do it in Indiana. Not going to do right. it in Indiana. No, no, no. Not going to do it in New Orleans. I can see him taking that day off, letting AD just get yeah. that slander. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't think the Thunder, because who wants to break the scoring record against the Oklahoma City Thunder? No disrespect to Oklahoma City. Think Milwaukee Bucks probably makes the most sense. A, because I have tickets to that game, and B, because Kareem played for the Bucks. They've kind of had some shit going oh, on. Oh, that back makes and sense. Forth. Yeah. Yeah. Petty, petty shit going on. Yeah. So now I'm going to break the record. I'm going to do it on the, the team you know, that you won championships with. While you playing with the Bucks. For the team. <laughs> while playing for While playing against the team <laughs> where you started your career. It would be interesting him doing it against the current best player in the world. Ooh. Or it will be interesting him doing it in Golden <laughs> State against like his arch nemesis of a team. You, you know what I'm saying? So I don't I don't know. The but trip at the the game after Milwaukee is Golden State. Is yeah. that the next one? Golden, Golden State, yeah. Though, so, though. yeah. When you, you say against the greatest player in the world, he's playing against himself. Or is there, I mean, oh, yeah. Bro, LeBron James, greatest player of all time. No, greatest player in the world. Giannis, Giannis is that too. Do you, you think for Giannis that he'll be like, okay, LeBron needs 32 tonight? He's not getting that. Like, do you think Giannis will tank his own offensive game just to stop LeBron from breaking that record against him? No, Giannis is uh, Greco-Nigerian, uh, very kind people, very appreciative, <laughs> very respectful. Obviously, you know the very story competitive, of very competitive. competitive. But he, he knows it's LeBron's league still. Uh, I think deep down, they're probably trying to make a play to get LeBron to Milwaukee at some point. You know, I think I think he's gonna go and set himself up where he's got like he could have done it against the Bucks. But he'll need like six points and get it done against the Warriors. And I think that's, for me, that's the best. In Golden I, State. I think that's the best, too. And then like have to applaud that, that him. History. Right, right. Delicious. I wonder if they're going to applaud him. I they wonder will. if they're going to applaud him. They They've hated him for so ass. long. And there's some real they nerds themselves. there. There's some <laughs> real nerds, not there basketball fans. There, there is, you feel mm, what I'm saying? There is so, some dweeb, especially on Twitter in the words. You feel me? You feel like, me? So like, it's, it's not like real basketball fans. They just started watching the game four days ago. So, like, it's, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll see, but. It'll be interesting if it's done there, you know? Yeah. I think Bucks, game winner, hook shot, call timeout, Left Darvin will draw the oh, play up, give me some goggles. Big Patty. <laughs> give me big some petty. goggles. Big I'm going to shave my shit real quick like Kareem. <laughs> give me, bring up the goggles. That would be. Goggles, game winner over Young. Goggles, knee pads. I hope Kareem is there. I know him and LeBron. Obviously, <clears> I saw eye to eye. There was a clip of LeBron, I think, earlier this year. was like, you know, no, no thoughts, no relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kareem, yeah. Bron, figure it out, all right? Light skin to dark skin to come together. It's the time to unify <laughs> the city Chris of Los the Bloods, Angeles. You feel me? You already know. People are saying that Kareem's record is more valid because he didn't shoot Three. threes. How much bullshit? Is that I, it's just such a ridiculous way but he also, to minimize? He also what he's played done. a large portion of his career against men that chain smoke Marlboro Reds at halftime. Like I don't, it's a, uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm not gonna say the three point thing. Kareem's what seven foot three, seven foot four, yeah. whatever. He wasn't shooting skyhook three pointers anyway. That wasn't a part of his game. I think he hit one in his career. They yeah. showed it during the, the last Lakers game. Shout out to the Spectrum crew for always blessing us with the great, great content. I will say though that Kareem had to play four years of college, right? And yeah. the way he was dominating at that point, if you mm -hmm. want to make that argument in that case. That makes more sense. Definitely. That makes four more sense. Four years of college. Yeah. Yeah, you would have yeah. got to leave four years, but that also is four more years to burn his knees out. I uh, also think, to your point, the longevity thing with Kareem is so impressive. 
in the fact that like he they didn't believe in ice baths during that time they, period, they flew yeah. not private so this is a seven foot dude wadded up in a <laughs> shitty economy seat. knees to chin like, bro and playing you know in converse mean? yeah like all of that but also that. the, 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 the way they pies. played the game though it wasn't like it was a bunch of you know left to right you know lateral True, movement. but caught the ball you know what i'm saying like we talk about the, we talk about the jordan rules that the, the pistons had where they were like put him on the deck if he jumps like people were shitty to kareem and kareem had to deal with all sorts of like Off several different stuff eras as well. he had to deal with like the insane eras of like the 80s where guys would just like swing on you he had to deal with racist eras where guys would undercut him just because he's that guy and like they're racist and insane. Like, Do you what? remember when he when he banged? When he banged, it was the, the number one draft pick <laughs> of that year, and he's bro. You didn't want that smoke with Kareem. No. So I mean, yeah, it, it, yeah. Put him on the ground. Kareem made the wasn't one, one to be put on True. the ground. You know what I'm saying? It was going to end up the other way. Yeah. I remember that too. Elbowed him, and he the, just turned and stole on the yeah. man. What a you great story me? for you, gentlemen. The year was 1977. <laughs> the Bucks held the first and third pick in the NBA okay, draft. Okay. The first pick they selected Kent Benson, a white gentleman from Indiana. Probably had no business being selected first, but he fit the mold of the Midwest and what so. that city represented. With the third pick, they selected Marcus Johnson, who just happened to be the father of one of your co-hosts on this show. So <laughs> my dad tells the story all the time. Yeah. So they're playing the game. It's, I think the first game of the season, if I'm not mistaken, my dad's like, you know, his rookie year, he's like, oh, I'm excited as shit. Lakers are in town. Kareem's back in Milwaukee. Obviously, you know, Kareem had dipped to go to the Lakers, so it was what it was. But, yeah, so Ken Benson, number one pick, is like, I'm going to get physical with him, whatever. Kind of throws him that bow. Mm -hmm. Kareem obviously turns around, bink, just lays him. So my dad's guarding Jamal extension. Wilkes at that point. He kind of turns and looks. Oh. And he always tells the story. Kareem was standing over him like, yo, get up, get up, get up. My dad's like, yo, Cap, Hamid, you know, like Cap he's not shit. getting up. No, he done. <laughs> like, he done. <laughs> like some Ali yeah. Imagine that being your first NBA game. I think if forever, Ken Benson went on to have a, a, a decent NBA career. He, you know, he, Hard he, to recover, though. But yeah, hard yeah. to recover from that moment <laughs> getting just molly whopped in your first yeah. game in Milwaukee by a Muslim gentleman. You know, and there's nothing you could do about it. And Buck fans, it's like, only, shit, why are you playing with that man? The only thing I know about Ken, Ken Benson is that moment. Mm. But, I mean, is there a world we can just respect that, you know, Kareem did something amazing? For sure. That Bron is doing something amazing? For sure. Why do we have to create these arguments? You know, all of it is incredible. No, you know I agree. I mean? Well, Kareem is my all-time GOAT, as you guys know. Obviously, LeBron is my contemporary GOAT. But when you look at just the history of basketball and the scope, LeBron hasn't had rules instituted to literally stop him from performing. Imagine for you sure. got Kareem banging on dudes and like, oh, you know what? Can't dunk. Right, right, yeah. right. You know, dunking for like a good eight, nine year period, you know, was outlawed in college. And uh, just to see the way that Kareem, obviously he's carried himself, the amazing work that he's done, going on winning six championships, five MVPs, and balling into his latter years. But I remember Kareem in like the late 80s, his last kind of go around. He was definitely washed at that point. He was still yeah. proficient. Where you look at LeBron now, 38. In year 20, I'm so right. I'm just so used to seeing him ball and perform at this level, but averaging the same amount that he was averaging when he was like 23. Right, it's right. 20, he's averaging, I think, 29. And I went and looked at guys at his age, or at what, season 19, season 20, what guys had. And you're like Malone. MJ, Kareem, and they're all in like the low 20s, and then you have LeBron at 29. Incredible, so like incredible. So regardless of how you feel about LeBron, whether you love him or you hate him, just admit he's had the longest peak in NBA history. He is the GOAT. There's been other great players. This is no knock to Jordan, no knock to Kobe, no, but in no. terms of longevity, literally, yeah, you can say he, he helped launch the big three area, but the Warriors had to launch the big four era just to compete with them. <laughs> mm -hmm. this A wash man with the receding hairline, <laughs> starring in Space Jams and House Party movies, like, Still giving your team work. Is there a GOAT argument after this, do you believe? Do you still believe there's even an argument after this? No, but people are insane. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, that is what it is. You there's know? one gentleman that has the potential to carry the torch into the future. Are we going there? Seven La foot ladies and gentlemen, up next, <laughs> Brandon Jennings. The godfather of going abroad. The youngest player to drop 50. He sat Steph worse than anyone in NBA history. I'm glad we're talking about that. That was my favorite part of that 50 game. Brandon Jennings. What's up? What's up? What's, what's up? What's up? up what's, what's up? What's up? up? We're going to get to the Steph stuff in a little bit. I was wondering, do we jump in it? Do we, do we jump into it? That game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, but we'll get there. Let's let's start. We gotta go back to your high school years. Top rated player on ESPN. I think uh, rivals were being janky and had you number four. I was you know a little disappointed to see that. BJ Mullins, I think, was number one <laughs> on that joint. But just talk to me about that time when you look about the guards just in your class. You had Tyreek Evans, Kemba Walker, Clay was kind of lower rated. It was a little bit younger, but 
What was it like for you just in those days, especially just AAU? I know you know you was playing with with Kevin Love, yeah. And you said y'all y'all ran the table on everybody. What was it like playing with that crew? And who who were your toughest matchups back in those days? Well, those days were like those days. I felt like we had to really earn it. Like you know, it's ball is life. Uh, who may say but the, you know, yeah. it's all it's mm -hmm. all big now. So yeah. you know, back then that was new for us. Like to you know, just that whole era of MySpace and you know, just all that. So <laughs> that's like, awesome. The the competition was just like unbelievable to me. Like everybody had to, you know, you always wanted to prove yourself every weekend. Like yeah. you, you wasn't ducking no smoke. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. you know, if OJ Mel and Derrick Rose and all these was in the tournaments, like you wanted to be in it. Yeah. Um, Tariq Evans, Kimball Walker. I remember first playing against Kimball Walker up in Arizona and she was, it was kicking our ass. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, like just things like that just, just always stuck with me. So besides yourself in those high school days, who who was your favorite player or toughest matchup? Who was the guy you knew was going to get the most? Tariq out of Evans. You? Okay. Tariq Evans was always like a person that I was always like going against or just like trying to stay on that level. Like he was he was like that guy you had on your wall like back then. Hoopers love Reek. Yeah. You know I think Shump came on up. Yeah. Said like one of the few players he was like he just could not figure out mm -hmm. was Reek. He was just a guy though. But John Wall said that he had his breakout game against y'all. Um, he said he dropped like 34, you know what I'm saying? Do you remember that game at all? Where was it? John? John Wall said he had his breakout. <laughs> in AAU, it was AAU ball. Mm. You know, he said he had his breakout game. I was wondering if you remembered it all. I don't remember that, but I do remember, like, John was serious. Like, yeah, him, yeah. Him, John, John Wall and you know who else in that class? Lance Stevenson. Oh, yeah. In high, people in high don't school? Bring, yeah. Out of high school. Yeah. But I remember seeing Lance Stevenson, eighth grade, go against O.J. Mill at ABCD camp and hold his own. <laughs> OJ like, was like that. We like, don't like, talk about that. Yeah, like, no, we don't. Like Lance Stevenson was like that guy. Like, yeah. He, he was that guy to me. Like You were talking about the Hoops mixtape era and like mm -hmm. early YouTube days with Ball is Life and all of that. What was it like seeing those go viral? Because that was like the early days of things going viral. And then do you what are your thoughts on like these guys now that grow up with it everywhere? Every game they play is yeah. on the internet. Yeah, I remember the first time I had my first hot, uh, highlight hoop mixtape. I thought I was like, oh yeah, this is it. Like yeah, they were on YouTube, like going to MySpace, put it on my page. <laughs> like, you know, so everybody come to my page, like, yeah, this is me. So yeah. I mean it was a little weird at first because it was like, yo, why are you following me with a camera? Like, but <laughs> but then like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like back, I mean it's 100%. just like, yo, oh, what's up, hoop? I'm like, all right, like whatever. But <laughs> Like, it was just the start of it. Like, we didn't even know. Even Do you have a favorite that isn't yours? I Man, I like Akil Cars. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. I forgot Stop. about Akil. Yeah, 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 the crimes built. I mean, and plus, he used to wear my shoes in high school. Okay, so, there we go. There we go. awesome. You know, of course. Tariq Evans, of course. Yeah. John Wall. The John Wall tape was my favorite. John Wall's crazy. Yours is one of the first to go crazy, though. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yours, John Wall, Rose were the first, done the kind of three that was like, yo, who the fuck is this? I'm, I'm my country ass and I'm, I'm in, in St. Louis. <laughs> like, as a grown who ass is man, this? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it was like nationwide. Yeah, I mean, I was doing my thing, you know? <laughs> I left Dominguez, I went to Oak Hill, and I had to represent for the West Coast. For sure, for sure. I remember being at ASU or looking at going to ASU and seeing your tape and hearing that you were going to go to Arizona and being like, how the hell are we going to stop him? Like, what is going <laughs> to happen? It was supposed to be me, Jared Bayless, uh, Jordan Hill, and Chase Budinger. That would have been crazy. Yeah, that would have been. But Jared had left. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. was like... <clears throat> Uh, and then Luke Olsen left, so I was like, okay. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. When you look at that squad, man, you talk about Arizona backcourts. I mean, you got Damon Stoudemire, Khalid Reeves. You got Mike Bibby. You could go with Michael Dickerson or Miles Simon, just depending. A lot of people don't know Miles Simon, but he was a fucking beast yes. back then. like that, for you sure. You got Salim and whoever you want to insert. Yeah, Salim, my favorite. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was going to say, like, watching your game, and it's probably the greatest compliment I can give any human being. It reminded me, I'm watching that 50, it's just, but your ability to create shot, the lefties, but get buckets anywhere. And the thing when we used to play Salim, it was like, you couldn't just put one dude on him. Mm. Like he would just laugh in the face of whoever. I remember we had Aaron Aflalo, shut down defender. We're playing him at Arizona. Uh, we're in a timeout that we're, we're, we're up to or something like that. Ben Howland's like, look, guard him, guard him one step in for half court. Aaron doesn't do it. He pulls up one step in from half court, <laughs> straight fucking bucket. But Aaron had the size too. You know yeah, what I mean? Like a good. Yeah. Where do you think that backcourt of you and Jared Bayless would have ranked? Would it have been the greatest backcourt in Arizona history? Uh, I think we would have won it. Yeah, uh, like, like we would have won it. I mean, me, me, Jared, Chase Budinger, Drew, uh, Jordan Hill. Like, yeah. I mean, that's a like that's everybody made it to the NBA. So yeah. like, that's four right, guys right, for sure right. going. Like a lot of guys have got the NIL deals now, you know what I mean? People making like multi-million NIL deals. You would have had a bag coming your way if you would have come to college. 
do you think you would have thought more about coming to college or would have came to college rather than going overseas if if that opportunity was for you? Well, it just depends. Like, I had trouble taking the SAT. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Like, not, yeah, you know, yeah. I wasn't really, like, book smart in school as much. Uh, you know, I cared about basketball a lot. So, so probably, I probably would have kept going over. Okay. I, I probably would have kept going overseas. Yeah, overseas. Anyways. Yeah. Do you feel a sense of pride seeing the guys that are going overseas? Because you kind of laid the groundwork. Like, you see, you know, Lamelo goes overseas. You see some of these guys going that route. Or even the G League, like yeah. the Ignite and stuff like that. Do you feel sort of a sense of pride because you kind of – paved the way for those guys yeah i give uh yeah um i want to give a shout out to sonny vaccaro mm. no kidding sonny vaccaro he's the one that put it all together for me so without him and his guy and him guiding me and telling me young fella this is going to work like you're going to see like you know just all i need you to do is just stay here do a year and watch more kids do it so yeah. uh, shout out to sonny vaccaro for right on out for me i remember when you you made that move i was so happy and I'm, i've had you know different feelings about the NCAA, but just knowing the way that they exploit athletes, especially during that time. Mm -hmm. We even talk about the hoops mixtape and the baller's life. Like, they need to cut you a check. I'm just going to be yeah. real. I know, because you, yeah. you're getting millions and millions of views with these dudes showing in, you know, not putting nothing in the offering plate. Like, <laughs> like you, you help really spawn and build this whole highlight mixtape culture. But let's talk about making that move to Italy. I think you were 18 at that yes. time. You yes. kind of just turned 19 when you were over there. It was a heavily scrutinized move, and that's what I couldn't wrap my head around. So do, do you feel like, and this is what I always wanted to ask you, do you feel like that was kind of racially motivated? You got this black kid from Compton who's saying, you know, fuck college, I'm going to go get this bag overseas. And I kind of make the joke, if you were Brandon Janelli and you had the same accolades, <laughs> same everything, but grew up over there, we're playing in EuroLeague and Italian Series A, you'd be a top two pick because they say, oh, look at this kid's potential. He's playing against grown men. But it seems like they use that to kind of knock you down when in my mind, like you're playing against much better talent than what you're going to get in college and you're getting thrown in the fire. You got to play in the fucking Euro League. And we've heard Lucas say those things. Oh, you know, it's harder than it is in America. So do you feel like you were kind of, you know, targeted a little bit? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. I remember Jay Bill is killing me. Oh, like, you know, like who does this kid Jay. think he is? Like, why does he... You know, uh, he doesn't want an education, and it's, and I'm just looking at it like oh, I'm wow. not gonna go to class probably anyway. <laughs> it's Arizona. Like, 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 oh, I, 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 I had like, to do yeah, the like, class. I'm do yeah. one semester, and like, all right, that's it. Like, I know I'm going to the league. So, but I just feel like I got a lot of you know education just going over overseas, like living in a being out of my comfort zone, taking a risk, um, getting a different perspective of life. Mm -hmm. You know, playing overseas. You know, they don't really need much. They just care about their team, their families. And, you know, just being able to go to the game. So just the perspective and taking my mom, my brother, um, having them with me was just, you know, one of the greatest experiences of my life. You were 18 dealing with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Going overseas, but also dealing with people like Jay Billis wanting you to be an accountant or some shit. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. Jeezy quoting Jay Billis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, like, right, right, right. <laughs> So how did you deal with that at that age? You know what I'm saying? My mom, my brother, um, Undarmer, shout out Chris Stone, Sonny Bacurl, uh, my agent at the time, Bill Duffy. Um, you know, they really was helping me and just guiding me. Mm -hmm. um, so I had, I, had, I, had a, I had a great team with me in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So what, what was that experience like for you? Going from being a man in high school, remember you rocking the high top, you know, I think none of us forget that McDonald's game, but just how legendary the high top was. And the Gumby and the Jordan. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and the Gumby so house party inspiration, right? You know what I mean? Like, but what was it like for you going now, number one player in high school, putting up 35 a game at Oak Hill, just dominating, now to go to Italy playing with grown ass men, you know, you know, not quite on the level of soccer games, but my pops played in Italy back in the day. And motherfuckers throwing batteries on the court, going crazy, you know, the fans like, they're pretty rabid. So what was that experience like for you just hooping over there? Well, it taught me patience because I didn't come in playing. Like mm -hmm. they, you know, I only played maybe 10, 12 minutes. Sometimes I didn't play at all. So I think it was just a good for my mental to be patient and just keep grinding. Like I just had to keep grinding. I, you know, we practiced two times a day overseas, um, have to work out. Um, so I was just on a big grind and, you know, all through God, you know, that's why I was able to, you know, make it through. For sure. My girlfriend and I are talking about going to Italy. Do you have a recommendation, like a must-go place? Yeah, you got to go to the – well, you got to go see the Coliseum and the yeah. Spanish ste and the okay. steps. And okay. All, all, yeah. All right, the I cheesecake appreciate it. out there is crazy. All right, all right, good to know. Good to know. Heavy flex. Cheesecake. Heavy flex, man. You know what I mean? My yeah. girlfriend and I are going to Italy. He's uh, thinking about it. Yeah, the pizza's okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so much olive oil on the yeah, shit. Yeah, the pizza, the pasta. I, yeah, I'll stay with the risotto, the pasta, and some wine. Oh, the pizza oh, weed? All right. Hey, bro, the Italian pizza weed? You are like a puddle of olive oil, so you got to go ask for it with no olive 
olive oil. That's oh, okay, our shit. Okay. Like, I remember the first time we ate pizza. They're like, "How are we supposed to eat?" With it was literally just like a layer of olive oil on that shit. And it's oh, like, unfortunate. You know, unfortunate. Straight bubble guts. All right, so let, let's talk about you know you, you play overseas. Yeah. Draft night. You thought maybe the Knicks were going to take you. I think they have what the AFC or eighth pick. Excuse me. So you thought the Knicks were maybe going to take you there at the eighth pick. You end up going to Milwaukee. But the question I want to ask you, the most memorable thing from that night, you pulled up. They, they announced the yeah. pick. But you kind of just pulled up when you felt like it. Yeah. So I want to know, what were you doing before that moment? And why? I know New York traffic could be a pain in the ass. So what, yeah. what, what, took, what took you so long to get to the arena? So this is what happened. So <laughs> I love when it starts that <laughs> way. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm talking I'm talking with my agent, and he's like, yeah, I, and I, I think you're going to slip in the draft. but Because I'm supposed to go lottery. I'm like slip but my but my mouth was the reason why i was getting in trouble yeah. like i was calling out ruby i was calling out all type of just saying whatever because i just felt like i was the best player in the draft so it kind of like that kind of had teams like backing off on me but i just remember my agent was like all right uh i don't know if you're gonna go to draft so i just went shopping i, I went I, I, yeah i took the train Yo. Yeah, yeah, i took the train i was on soho <laughs> i was just shopping i went shopping that day i went shopping then i came back had to get ready my family was meeting me in a uh, in a little lo in, in a little room that they had in a, a hotel. Everybody was there, and then next thing you know, I get picked tenth, and I'm like, and, then, and they're like, "Oh shit!" Like they want you to come to the draft. I'm like, "All right," like you know, so go to the draft, sitting in traffic, boom, boom, get there. You know, I'm like, you know, waving to the fans and all that, boom, <laughs> boom. And um, David Stern's in the back. He's like, "Well, the thirteenth pick not here, so I'm just bring you out okay. in the back." I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> and then that's when I came out. I was like, I was like, yeah, it was good. So I saw Sonny Vaccaro. I was like, Sonny, we did it. Sonny, like, you know, like, yeah, it was like, it's all time. Time. That's watch crazy. the clip. David Starr kind of has this look on his face, mm -hmm. but I think he had to just respect the, the, the power move that you made. And it's one of the few times I feel like he's got stunted on in kind of an NBA event. Yeah, like, I didn't even, what's crazy, if you look at it, I, I didn't even look at him. Yeah. I'm just more like, yo, I'm here, like, shaking his hand, just like, yeah. Like, Are you the first or only draft pick to, ever come to, to, yeah, sure. to pull up late? Like, you know what I'm like, saying? Like, good? Like, you know my bad? I mean? Like, tra stuck in traffic. The shop is crazy in New York. My bad, G. Yeah. You feel me? I was in Soho, dude. I was in Soho. Yeah, just shopping. <laughs> did they have a car for you or did you have to take a cab? What was... Yeah, uh, yeah They had yeah, a car. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was yeah, going to say, if you car. showed up in a cab or better, a train to get there, I don't know. <laughs> So we got to talk about, I know, and this is the thing, I know every time somebody bring you on, they got to talk about the 55 point game, mm -hmm. right? But just the sheer magnitude of it. I think you had dropped like 30, like prior to that mm -hmm. seventh NBA game. You got the Warriors in town. Steph was the seventh pick at that point. He wasn't playing quite as much as you were. Mm -hmm. Did you have any extra motivation going up? We all seen the clip, obviously hit him with the hezzy. <laughs> Help me <man> down. <laughs> yeah. Was there any motivation to go to go up against him because he was the seventh pick and you felt like you were kind of disrespected by teams that didn't draft you maybe earlier. No, nah, it wasn't. It, it wasn't anything personal with him. I like my first game coming out. Like I had seventeen ninety nine. Almost yeah. had a triple double. So like, and I think the motivation of me was Scott Skiles though. Like he, <laughs> like you know, because I wasn't posted. I wasn't going to start. Like and he and he had to make a decision with me and Luke Renard. And wow. Um, wow, you know, he had to tell Luke, like, you know, I'm gonna go with the young end. And Luke being a great vet, you know, he he helped me out a whole lot that year. So that that was just my confidence right there. Having guys like Kurt Thomas and like Jerry Stackhouse in the locker room. So, you know, I had some good vets. Like I had some good vets in, you know, that rookie year. So that was that was the motivation. It wasn't against like anybody. But you talk about Luke Ridd now, and a lot of people may not be familiar with that name, but Oregon. Killed it, Oregon. Legend. Killing. One of the coldest Caucasians. White boy had a oh. Jimmy and a handle. He had the yeah. Luke, so him and Luke Jackson, one of the coldest yep. Caucasians yep. in the game. Yeah. So I want to ask, when you came to that Milwaukee squad, obviously you, you fresh off of Italy, who was the vet that really showed you what it mean to be a pro? Uh, Kurt Thomas. Okay. Yeah, mm. Kurt, yeah, Kurt, and I still talk to Kurt Thomas to this day. You know, he was like, you know what's crazy? After that 55 point game, we, we was in the shower, he gave me a beer. Right, no, oh, yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He gave me a beer, and he was like, you know, he said something. He was like, "Yo, don't think they love you, like you know, like you, you know, you're gonna have to keep this going, like you know, wow. this ain't, you know, you ain't did nothing yet, like this is just one game, like we're gonna see where you at later, um, you know, but don't think they love you, like this is a business, this is a job, like long as you out there, you know, putting that thing in the hoop, they gonna say what you know, do whatever for you, but don't think they love you. In in Italy, you said you weren't even playing at some points, you know, you had to kind of figure things out. Then you come to the NBA, you like 17, nine and nine, mm -hmm. 30, you know what I'm saying, game three. You dropped the 50, you know, took Steph's ankles, you feel me? 
is the scoring different? Yeah, pardon me. Thank you. Thank you, you know what I mean? But is it like, is the scoring more difficult overseas? People have said that. I wonder like how, you know. It's, it's more a team. Okay, it's more okay. a team. Like the, the person who's averaging the most might average 15 points mm -hmm. and everything else is just that down from there. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, it's not like they want to win. So mm -hmm. they just, it's harder. The pain is more collapsed. Like it's more physical. Do you ever remind stuff? Are you like, yo, you remember that when I, you know? <laughs> When you well, 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 me and Steph, like, you know, we're kind of like in business together, right? Like, like now, like we're doing a collab, me and him with Tough Crowd. Okay, so, yeah. You know, that's my, you know, that's my man. That's my <laughs> okay, dog. yeah, yeah. No, you know, we love you, Steph. Yeah, yeah, we love yeah, you. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. my dog now. You I got to ask, dog. did you have a welcome to the league moment? Gilbert Arenas. That's well, fair. That's, I mean. What happened? He told me when we was trying to play him, he was like, I don't even care about nothing that you, I, I don't even look at tape about you. I just look at your big. Like, you're not going to be able to stop me. What's name's going to come over here screen and I'm going to play with your big all night and I'm going to score every time. Like, there's nothing you can do with me tonight. Yeah. And I was just like, okay. But, like, you know, like, <laughs> did he do and, that? and he did. And, and he had like, and this was before the gun thing. Like, this was before like the gun. I think like the next week he had like the gun thing. <laughs> oh. So I, I remember like, he he's killing me. Scott Scouts takes me out. He's like, you're not, you're not ready tonight. Just one of them moments like, damn, I can't do nothing. Were you kind of happy when Scott pulled you? Because I mean, after you're getting like 12, 15 buckets on you, so it might be time to. Yeah, you know I mean, mean, yeah, you know, Gil take you to the post. Like, Gil was so good, like, at just like, because he knew, like, your, your, your big man. Your, if your big man was sitting back or if he's up, he's going to go by. If he was mm -hmm. like, give him some room, you know, he's going to hit that pull up. So, mm -hmm. yeah. in fairness there. to Gil, you're talking about a man who dropped 60 on Kobe, yeah. gave Steve mm -hmm. Nash 54. In his but, hometown. Yeah, but we, you talk about you, you and the Steph collab, but you guys came in the league together. Mm -hmm. What was that kind of point in his game where you saw that he had a potential to be special? You talk about 09 not really playing that much. You know, obviously the Warriors kind of got him on a discount because he had the ankle injuries mm -hmm. and all that good stuff with his next contract. But from there to now MVP level seasons, like what, what did you see year to year in his growth? Just the work ethic. Um, I mean, he's a great shooter. So, I mean, long, you know, this game is about buckets. Um, mm. You know, he just takes it to another level every year, every year. And he's a silent, he's a silent killer. Like you wouldn't really, no. you like, you know, he's just like. Until he does the night night Bone, thing, yeah. Bone, yeah. Bone said that though, Bone said he don't say shit. No, nah, he don't. He just get the bucket and like <laughs> make a little joint and then go back on the defensive yeah. end, you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> he was always like that though, always. Yeah, I mean, he never really, he wasn't, I, I, it was this one moment we had in Detroit uh, when I played for Detroit and I remember I went under a screen and he hit the shot, he said, oh, you're going under now? <laughs> Oh, he, he felt disrespected. He felt disrespected. He felt disrespected. <laughs> and, and I was like, I was like, I'm never going under this. Like, yeah, he was just like, oh, that's what we're doing now. Right, All right. right. Like, you see where his Under Armour shoes are. This, the Steph's Under Armour yeah. shoes are one of the hottest shoes out there mm -hmm. today. You were one of the first Under Armour shoes to come out. Yeah. What was it like getting your Under Armour deal, getting the shoe made, mm -hmm. and what's your thoughts on where it is today? Man, getting the Under Armour deal. So I had just signed, I had just had dinner with Sonny, and I had just signed to go overseas, right? So I'm yeah. in the Win. I'm, I'm, I'm at the I'm at the Win Hotel, and I'm just and, I, and this I'm is when the Win was cr cr yeah. cracking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. This was cracking. And, and the Olympics. This is 08, so this is the Olympic team. Like they're getting ready to go, you know, to the, it, yeah, yes, in Vegas. And I'm coming out. I see Chris Stone. Right, I see Chris Stone, he started uh, the Elite 24 and all and um, and everything. And I'm like, yo, I'm about to, you know, I just signed to go overseas. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just signed over overseas and and I'm about to go. And he's like, hold on. He's like, you know, I just got the job at Under Armour. And um, he was like, uh, you know, take a ride with me. So we, we we go to the game, we go to the uh, the USA game. I meet Jay Kidd, mm. I'm meeting, uh, I'm telling Jay Kidd I'm about to go. He's like, hell yeah, fuck college, get this money. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yes, you know, it's like everybody, you know, everybody, you know, they all you know, agree. Ron, me and everybody early. Yeah. Him and, and then he was like, yo, like, you know, he showed me a shoe and he was like, yo, this is what we're doing in basketball. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Like, I'm always thinking something different. So I'm like, yeah, I could be the first two. Yeah, let's do it. Was there any reaction from Sonny? Because he was like the Nike guy then with Adidas. No, nah, Sonny, Sonny, you know, Sonny was like, who's who, 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 who's going to, you know, who's the highest bidder? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you know, it got, it, and it got to make sense. But it, it was also unique because they were first, you know, they were just getting into uh, yeah. basketball. So right everything just made sense. Awesome. So what, what was your favorite? That was a Redeem Team year, right? Oh, yeah, that was Redeem Team. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah Redeem Team. We watched Netflix, I appreciate yeah. y'all. But what was your favorite moment from that experience? Because the win was cracking at mm -hmm. that point. Were you seeing Kobe get in work in the gym and anything like that? They always tell that story. They were they was at the club, then they came back, and Kobe's literally going to work out. Yeah, no, I didn't I didn't meet Kobe then. No, I, I met Kobe later. But J-Kid, like, running around with J-Kid was crazy. Seeing Bron early, 
Mello, like all those guys. It was just like, it was just like a moment of like, I'm I'm about to be here next. Like I'm about to be in the NBA. Like That's it's here. Incredible. Like it's almost here. Yeah. You know. So you mentioned you like to talk and you don't duck any smoke. So, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna talk about 2011 lockout. I had the pleasure of filming you when you were playing with the Drew League and doing all that amazing stuff. And you know, I remember I interviewed you in DC. Just kind of ran up on you. you was cool enough to give me an interview. And you're just like, yo, I'm, I'm the guy that everybody's going at. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just what it was. But you went Under Armour. Kobe Bryant's your favorite basketball player, right? Yeah. You wear the nobody likes a snake. Yeah. And the purple and gold <laughs> shirt. Yeah. So I want to know, you know, I know you said Kobe has circled that game on the counter. Y'all actually came in, I think, beat him uh, in L.A. It was the lockout. You said the one, one game that y'all actually played. But did he ever press you for that moment or did he just kind of, did he have respect for you for doing that or what were your interactions like? Man, my first Kobe moment, man, he gave me a, a look. I was like, damn, like this dude is like, he's serious. Like it was my <laughs> rookie, it was my rookie year and I had just, you know, I already scored 55 and this one he hit the game winner in Milwaukee. Okay. Right, so he came, he like, you know, everybody that, but when he came on the court serious and looked at me like, like that, and I was like, <laughs> for what though? Like, like, yeah, like just more like, thing. that's yeah, Kobe. Yeah, just, yeah, it's just Kobe, it was just more like, like you ain't shit, little nigga. <laughs> like, you know, like, like one of those, and I was just like, okay, like it's on, like it's on. And I just remember him like, I remember him missing the game winner, I remember him missing the game winner, and then going back to that same spot and making the, and, and, and then, you know, making the game winner. How'd you play that game? Like, how does it feel seeing your favorite player kind of look at you like that? You know what I mean? Cause now y'all are peers, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, it was just like, you know, it was one of the moments where you just get stuck and you just watching him. Like, you know, I was, you yeah. know, I was a rookie. So I'm like watching his body language, his movement, how he's talking to Powell. And you know, this is Lamar and Lamar Odom's, you know, like on the team, that. like, yeah. you know, they're, they're like that. Like, right, 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 right. Kobe's in that, in that dog mode. So <laughs> it was just, it was just very, very serious. Is, is there a favorite trash talk moment you have? Like yeah, you, with KG. Yeah. Well, yeah, KG, me and KG was talking. He called me a red rooster. Cause I, I remember I had, <laughs> cause I remember I had a mohawk, right? I had seven different hairstyles. So I had a mohawk and I had it like, 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 like kind of like burgundy red. Yeah. And, and I remember like we had beat them at home and me and KG talking. I'm like, man, you ain't shit. Like, he's like, well, shut up you little red rooster. You know, like, <laughs> like all that. Shit. And I'm like, so it was cool though. That's incredible. When KG's talking shit, is it really <laughs> affecting? Did you ever see guys get affected by it? It seemed like he just doing a lot of barking and woofing. Once you get used to it, it ain't a big deal anymore. I mean, no, I didn't get affected by it. I loved it because, I mean, we were told, I mean, we won at Boston. I remember my uh, my rookie year, mm -hmm. first round. Like, we wanted them because we matched up so well. Like, Carlos Delfino, Bogut, before Bogut got hurt, John Salmons. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John mm -hmm. Salmons on the team. So, yeah, we wanted them because we felt like we matched up well with them. Okay. But KG was a dog though. Whoop. KG was a dog. Like in that Boston Garden, pumping his chest, like hitting his head with the ball. It's like, <laughs> it's, like it's on tonight. That shit ain't intimidating because that seemed kind of different. You know what I'm saying? I mean, nah, it's just like whatever. It's you don't like, see well, that yeah. anywhere though. Like he's he's yeah. a different type of, you know, dude. You yeah, feel me? No, nah, definitely. Was there anyone that trash talk ever surprised you? Like Boogie came on and told us about the Tim Duncan trash talk. Was there anyone that was kind of like you were like, I didn't. I no one had told me that you were the guy that would talk or anything. You know who I got into it with, but he, but he got me back too. Nate Robinson. <laughs> no kidding. Nate Robinson. Yeah, I remember. We, I was in I, Nate Rob was in this one. Nate Robinson was in Chicago. Okay. And I remember I was like clowning, like clowning, like clowning that. And then he saw me in Milwaukee, and then he got me in Milwaukee. Like bad though. Like he was like, yeah, he got he came off the bench, like came he, I think he hit me with a backdoor dunk and then he's like got in my face and I and I, I mean I got kicked out for the game too. Yeah, I got kicked out. Yeah, he got in my head though. Yeah, I give him that. So you played against some elite guards in your NBA career. <laughs> yeah. Who who is that player that you look forward to playing the most? Playing the man, you know who I used to I used to love playing against Darren Williams. Okay. Oh, no, people Williams. don't give him the flowers he deserves. It was him and CP3 for a while. They were saying, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it was Darren though. <laughs> Darren, <laughs> yeah. Darren, Darren Darren was the guy for 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 a minute. Like but I used to love going against him. Like I used to have some good games, but I used to love his game though. Like I used What to is it about his game? He was, he, I mean, he was physical, like he was, uh, he was athletic, like low key, like people didn't know, um, but he was just that 20 and 10. Like, you know, he was that point guard back then, like still 20 and 10 every night. I remember at Illinois, he was like the second best player mm -hmm. on the team. Yeah, D Brown was D Brown, Brown was the yeah, one, yeah, yeah, you know Brown what I'm saying? The yeah, and then he, the he was just too small. Same thing, kind of like Johnny Flynn, where he's like a god in college, come in, he just can't figure it out anymore, but they still a dog though, yeah. crazy. What was the name he gave the police? Uh, Perry, I forget, it was the most legendary story ever. When he was, like some shit went down, I think in Utah and they gave fake names to the cops. But his <laughs> oh. name was so on point, it was like Perry or Purvis, I forget what it was. It was like, <laughs> damn, I would believe Dude. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
So everybody talks about that 55-point game, right? But for you, was that your best game or was there another game when you feel like you, you played better? Um, I mean, I still like my first game, like, ever. Mm -hmm. Like, the 17-99, like, because uh, coming out, almost having a triple-double, like, not knowing, like, you know, the nerves, like, just your first game. So I think my first game and then that 20-20 20 and 20 game I had in Detroit. Like, okay. that run I had in Detroit before I tore my Achilles, that 17-game or 20-game span was, like, my best run, you know, in, in my career. Ever. When you got 55, it wasn't, <clears throat> like, it wasn't common. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, now it seems like somebody dropping 40, 50 mm -hmm. every night, somebody going yeah. crazy, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a crazy, like, you know, run right now as far as the scoring. Like, what do you think is behind that? Is Are the players just that good? People are talking about the defense, but I don't necessarily think it's that, but. I mean, I, I, I say it's the Steph, it's, it's Steph. Mm. It's, it's the, you know, the, the way Steph plays. Like, the way Steph plays is the reason why a lot of guys are playing the way they're playing. Mm. You know, it's, it's you know, getting buckets, like, you know, coming down, hitting threes. Like, uh, like Steph and Dame Lillard, I think, is the reason why everybody's playing the way that, like they're playing now. Interesting. When you win for 55, as someone who's never gone for that amount, yeah. ever. <laughs> Uh, even in my wildest dream, would I not? People don't have the uh, energy to give. Yeah, that yeah. takes a lot of Earth energy. Well, you know what I mean? Uh, it's shame. Right, right, right. I, I too much to get fifty-five. <laughs> Were you looking at the at the scoreboard at all? Were you looking at the stat sheet in between? What I didn't know nothing. Like, really, I, I didn't really know anything. Really, like I I I knew when I came off, I hit that bank shot. I knew I had 50 then, and yeah. I was like, yo, everything is going in. Like, I was like, I can't miss tonight. I remember, though, after that 55-point game, the next morning I went to Denny's. <laughs> Real nigga. Treat yourself. <laughs> Treat yourself for that. He's like, Fuck I went it. to Denny's. I didn't go to, like, I didn't, I didn't go out to, I think we went out to eat after, but the next morning I just went and got Denny's and went back to the to the gym and worked Right out. on. Yeah. Nobody stopped you in Denny's? Like, I saw you drop the 50, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, no, nah, I was just reading the paper with me in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a movie scene. Walking That's different. wild. Walking. Right, right. So you talk about your first game in the league, almost having a triple double. You've had triple doubles in your career. Let's talk about Russell Westbrook. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's probably one of the most polarizing players, I think, in the history of the NBA. Yeah. You either love him or you hate him. It seems like, from a player standpoint, a lot of players fuck with him just and just respect him, but fans that don't really get it. And he kind of, I think, you know, destroyed the sanctity of the triple double, right? You do it for four seasons, now all of a sudden, oh, it's not that hard to have a triple double. It's the shit I hear people say. Yeah, crazy. To Zach's point, n none of us have accumulated I stat. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, not even uh, a foul. A, yeah. not, Single solitary stat. So, <laughs> from your perspective, especially being a guard, how difficult is it to, to drop a triple double in a game and even average a triple double for a season? I mean, it's very hard. I mean, I, you, you gotta have a nose for the ball. Um, that t Doing that for four seasons, I mean, you know, I take my hat. I gotta salute him for that, cause, I mean, you know, you're in shape, your body, like you're in shape, your mind, like you're just on a whole different level. Um, Russell Rusbrook's resume is crazy. I can't wait till you retire. I'm gonna talk crazy. I saw you tweet that. Yeah, so I'm gonna talk. I was crazy. hoping maybe we get a little bit bit of it now. I, was, I mean, I just think you know, being from LA, you know, Russell, he wasn't ranked high. You know, a lot of people didn't know him. Um, you know, he used to, I remember Russell being at the sand dunes when we were younger, mm -hmm. like, you know, ninth, 10th grade, working on his hops, like, you know, working on his legs and, you know, trying to get better and better. And then, you know, going to UCLA, like having that breakout year, then, you know, I heard guys in the, in the draft didn't even want to work out with him, like against him because, you know, they felt like it would hurt their draft stock. So it was just a, like, I just, I just like his, his, his way of, you know, how he went about it. Yeah, for sure. Day. I remember Russell UCLA at those points. I think the story was he's supposed to go to Arizona State. Somebody from UCLA went to the draft, so they called him off for a scholarship. He U-turned, came back, and, and got it in. But just the, the work ethic, the strength, and, and you look at him on this this Lakers squad now, and this is something I talked to, to Gil a lot about because Gil's not a fan of, of Russ being a sixth man. Yeah. And I think LeBron and AD aren't playing. Like, Darvin Ham, I get it, but you can't let Russ sit for the first five minutes of the game when that squad needs him out there. Mm -hmm. So do you agree with how the Lakers are using him this season or, or – how would you like Russ to be used on that squad? I think Russ needs his own team. Like, I think Russ needs his own team. Like, that year, Russ got MVP, and the way he took OKC, I mean, they went to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But, like, that was just, like, unbelievable. Was that like, 2018? Yeah. 2020-20 game? Was that that or same Nip. year? No, that was, Nip was 19, right? Because that was the one in Denver. Remember he hit the game winner? And he ended the, like, remember in Denver when he hit that game winner? And he, yeah. hit, and he, and he uh, that was the season. Right, 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 <clears throat> right, right, right. The Lakers obviously had some bad calls the other night against the Celtics. Yeah. I'm curious, do you ever get into it with any officials or get any – like what do they say back to you when you're saying that? Because they obviously make mistakes. I think in this case it was a pretty bad one. Yeah. But what are you saying to officials as those things are happening? 
I mean, we're cussing them out. <laughs> I mean, I when you when you were in the league, that's when this sort of shift ha- like happened, where yeah. like kind of like at one point in your career, you could say whatever you wanted, mm-hmm. and then another point, yeah. you'd be. Was that hard for you to adjust? To? Yeah, yeah. I think my I think after the lockout, I think that's when we had to like like you know zip we had to it. yeah zip it a little bit. <laughs> but before that, like yeah, I used to yeah some guys used to talk crazy. Seeing Bron like <laughs> react the way he did, some people were saying he was like overreacting. The motherfucker is thirty eight years old, bro. He never take minute. his ass home, G, and he can't get a fucking call as a goat. It's crazy. Does that make sense to you? Like what you know, seeing him reacting that way. I mean, it was yeah, it was a foul. I yeah. mean, it was a foul. Oh, for yeah, sure. Yeah, it was a. I mean, and right now the position the Lakers are in, they need to win. Like every like they need yeah. to win. Right, right, right. So you can see that looks so, on yeah, his face. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's getting to that point. Can't keep dropping. All right, so we talked about that. I mean, we saw Pat Bev get the tech with the camera. Dejounte Murray tweeted something the other day. <laughs> that was hilarious. That, that's that, that one of camera, the best. Oh, that, that, that was hilarious. Yeah, that's, that's one legendary. of the best things yeah, I've yeah, ever seen. Probably the greatest tech in NBA. Here. I'm trying to think <laughs> in my head anything that comes close to that. But it, it just, what's funny like, too is that he doesn't know how to use a camera. That shit was black. <laughs> he just grabbed the camera it. Like and he was like, frame file, up. Point at a black screen file. Yeah. You know what I mean? Beautiful. Okay. Like true Chicago Negro fashion. Like, you but feel I'm, me? I'm a one up. In, but, you know, we saw DeJounte Murray tweet recently. He got a, a tech for saying good call. What, what's the worst tech that you've gotten or that you've seen someone get where it's just like, come on, dog? I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm pretty like if I get a tech, I'm getting kicked out. I'm trying to get kicked out. Like, I'm not giving get your money's worth. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting my money's worth, and I'm taking my jersey off. The money the like I'm, I'm going. Yeah, I'm let's getting, make I'm it spicy. Off. Yeah. <laughs> do you have like? Do guys have like an internal like that's going to be a fine? Like oh, I'm getting a letter from the league that's going to be a fine when you do something. Yeah, or is yeah, it? yeah. I remember I was in Toronto and I did like the the thing like like <laughs> the big balls, yeah, yeah, the big balls, and they that's the, uh, yeah, the, who was that? Sam Cassell, Sam Cassell, Cassell. Yeah, yeah, not even Sam Cassell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even know. And the next day they was like, yeah, the league fined you twenty five thousand. Oh my! You, You're doing the you have no marbles, then? Yeah, you yeah. Was in a movie. Yeah. You rich people would be like, it's only twenty five k. Um, that twenty five k though, that hurt, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. How long does it hurt for? <laughs> yeah, I mean. My financial advisor let me know, like, you know. Take it easy. Yeah, take, yeah. relax. Like, yeah. <laughs> but see, if, if ref fuck Eat up, at Denny's this week. Don't go elsewhere. <laughs> like in that Pat Bev situation, inevitably he's probably going to get fined. But if refs fuck up, it's like, all right, we got to give you 25 back for that because that was on us. Or find the ref. Bro, the, and yeah, the, the, the ref should have been fine for that, bro. There should be something set up like Make that. Make him wear a bowl yeah. cut or a janky they, hairstyle for it. You can't miss big plays like that and shit sweet. You just apologize. Shut the fuck I, up, bro. Make I, the right call. I have something I want to ask because they pointed to that official that was like the head official in that game. And I think the Celtics are 36 and 32, or 36 and 2. I don't think that was. And his, fan, is and that his not family true? are Celtics fans. I think it's not true, Zach. Let's make sure you lied to me. Let's Internet have a little fun, guys. They are Celtics fans, though. <laughs> they were rocking the Celtics jerseys, but, which, okay. which in itself is already. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you caught me. I'm glad you fact checked yeah, me. On that. Believe, you know but, me, Zach. You know any opportunity to clown teams, uh, I don't fuck with. Yeah. I go for it. But are there? It. That's what the internet. That's what Twitter told me. Okay, okay. That's too bad. It said but it was cap. Are there officials that you feel like? like that hated you or that didn't like your team or didn't like your coach. Cause I remember in college, I knew the guys that hated our coach, like the, the, the crew, like, Oh, we're not getting one tonight. I just think with the refs, I think like if your team is trash, they just don't like, they just like whatever. Like, <laughs> like y'all not winning. Y'all don't win anyway. Like you're going home and they from anyway. Like, so if I'm a, if I'm a ref, I'm like, they ain't going like, like they What's going the matter? Home, yeah. <laughs> Like I, I just, I, I just think you gotta win. Yeah, you gotta win. So yeah. it's LeBron James, but they're twelfth in the West. Fuck them. You know that's what they're. Yeah. Well, like, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, a little bit. Like, yeah, yeah. kind of like well, whatever. Like you know, <laughs> that's cold. That's cold. Let's talk about that's last. What I think. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about last thing. summer, man. Uh, you have some, some some controversial tweets. I'll just say that they had the world buzzing. So you, you, tweet, you tweeted that you weren't really feeling the NBA becoming a player's league and said that guys like CP3 and LeBron had helped kind of usher in that era, but also mentioned that they'd earned it and there were some other guys mm-hmm. who were doing the same shit, you know, that didn't necessarily earn the right to be able to do that. So I wanted to know, how much do you blame the players for becoming a player's league versus how much do you blame terribly run organizations? We talk about this tank era. You got teams that deliberately try, I mean, you think about John Wall's experience with the Rockets, they're deliberately not playing them so oh. they could try and get a draft pick. So when players do have a little power, it's like, man, fuck this. I'm not just going to sit here and deal with this shit. I'm one out. So how do you kind of, you know, put that blame out there? Who who, gets, who deserves more of it? I mean, I think it's we got to come to a common ground. Like, we got to come to a common ground. It's both. It's both sides. I mean, players are making a lot of money. They don't want to play. The franchi- franchise is making a lot of money. They trying to, like, whatever. Like, they'll just keep. But 
I mean, it's, winning changes everything. But guys got to want to play too, though. Like guys just missing games. Everybody's just missing games. Like, you know, like taking my son to a game. I don't even know if, like, uh, you know, the main player's going to play anymore. Yeah, and it's definitely. like guys are just missing games, though. Yeah. Like just missing a lot of games. And it's just like, all right, well, you know, both everybody's fed up. We yeah. saw that situation with, with uh, Jimmy Butler. Yeah. And the fan kid had flown like 4,000 miles. But Jimmy made good. Obviously got him tickets oh, yeah. to another game. Yeah. So you feel like, guys, you're not a fan of this low management era? No, because what, what is low man management? Like, we st the NBA has been going for years. So guys play 82 games. Guys play. Like, if you want to play, you want to play. Just play mm. basketball. Like, all this, like, low management. Oh, I can't. it's like, all right, well, do you want to play or not? Like, that's my thing. Because, mm. like, missing, okay, missing. I mean, I mean if you're hurt, yes. Like, I oh, get it. If you can't sure. go, yes. But just, uh, okay, well, I played, you know, five and seven nights, and now I'm going to just take off a week. Like, what? Like, nah, like, keep what? going, like, play. Like, I don't know. I I just love to play basketball. So if I can go, I'm going to go. I wish I could load manage, manage my own, like, job. You know what I mean? Like, if I, if I could be like, I'm going to take five days off. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, yeah. There so, are a lot of people that can't do that, though. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like, yeah, to your point. The last thing we want to wrap with, what's your favorite move? Like, your favorite move you ever had? Or, like, your go-to? Yeah, what was the best thing in your back? The step back. The Tim Hardaway between the legs crossover step back. It was. Ooh. Yeah. I love that. Uh -uh, step back because when did you when did you like when did that move probably around like ninth grade ninth grade i used to watch a lot of like kenny anderson kenny anderson at georgia tech a lot so yeah. kenny anderson was like my favorite uh my favorite point guard growing up a lot of kenny anderson so kenny anderson and like tim hardaway um chris jackson you know, Mahmoud. Uh, yeah, Mahmoud. His uh, his, his uh, I think his didn't his documentary just drop? It's coming out. I think uh, February third. Need yeah. to tap in with that for yeah, sure, bro. So, nah, but yeah, you look at what he did with like a forty-five second shot clock and no three-point line. I don't think people can really wrap their head around it. Yeah. and just with the oof, giving a bucket. So, one more thing for you: you have to pick one hype song. This is the only song you could play before games. What song would you pick that is going to get your mind right and get you ready for a bucket getting? What's that Jay Z song? Diamonds are forever. Wow, that's okay. a little I like flex. that. That's a kind of a flex though, too. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, Jay, feeling yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The rock is in the building. I want to ask you a question about the tough, about tough crowd. You had okay. the, you know, the the collab with uh with Steph. How'd that come about? You know what I mean. And do you play golf at all? You played at all? Because I know you had the golf ball, the golf glove, yeah. and all that. Yeah. So me and Steph, we're we're supposed to be uh, I'm dropping a collab with Steph this this fall mm -hmm. um, with Under Armour. But the connection comes back with Under Armour, um, Chris Stone, uh, Nick DePaula, um, and the whole Curry uh, family. So you know, I'm just very excited about that. You know, I think that's going to be. I think that's one of that's that's actually going to be my my biggest collab, and mm -hmm. actually the collab that pushes my brand really like you know, further in and out there. So I'm very excited about that. I'm definitely tapping in. I just picked up golf during the pandy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'll be out there playing young nudie, so I need to, you know, something to be a little okay. fresh, you feel me? You know, while, while I'm out there. Tough Crowd got 3X shit yet? I'm, I've been scouring the we, way. Y'all yeah. need some shit for the bigger jet, <laughs> jet okay? We like Popeyes, like, <laughs> but we still want to look sleek. But nah, I, I be seeing all the shit and I go to the site and it's like, oh, yeah. I got to drop 20 if I'm a fuck with this stuff, but I'm motivated. And then the golf, the golf came from uh, this movie called Funny Games. Okay, okay. You ever seen Funny Games? Uh -uh. uh -uh. Yes, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's like a, uh, it's a horror movie. It's like a, it's like two white, like two 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 white guys, and they dressed in white. They and they go adopt like this uh, this family and torture them. But they, but it, but they, it's our like have like golf gloves, like yeah, golf yeah. balls, and oh, like, okay. like that's that. inspiration behind. Yeah. I know the blood on the mm -hmm. on the golf, you know, on the, on the oh, glove. That's awesome. That. Yeah, Great yeah. movie though. That's so, awesome. Might tap in Friday night. You know what I mean? Watch it, watch it with your daughter. <laughs> right. yeah. We don't let her get screen time yet. She's too young. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no screen no, time. No, screen screen time. Screen 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 screen. Me too. Yeah. But, you, know, you know how raw this is. My little nigga's like, iPad. They know it's in front of the TV. Turn on sports. Anyway, poking out of ads and shit. Like, bro, I be wanting. She was my shit. ass. I'd be like, man, hand it this motherfucking bluey, dog. Let us sit down for a second. Anyway, man, appreciate you. Oh, no, thank you. No, Thanks thank for you tapping guys. in with us, man. For real, you, man. Thank appreciate you. Guys. you. Appreciate thank you. you. Appreciate New episodes drop every Tuesday. You can get it wherever you get your podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, wherever. If you want to watch it, you can see it on YouTube. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment below.